coach emailed me uh, with a question based on my book, Blitz Basketball, um, and he was asking about how I teach passing off the dribble. Uh, and so he asked if I was talking about a one-hand pass or a two-hand pass off the dribble. Uh, with the young players, uh, I do prefer a two-hand pass, but I don't teach a traditional chest pass where I'm going to make the pass uh, in front of my chest because oftentimes that's where a defensive player is. So instead, I really uh, want almost a one-handed pass, but I call it a push pass. Um, so I'm going to bring my offhand to the ball, and I'm going to push uh, with my, uh, you know, the dribbling hand behind the ball. Um, and so it's almost going to be uh, a similar motion to shooting, except for I'm going to be pushing more horizontal instead of vertical with the push. Um, but it's going to be a similar type movement where my uh, half the dribble, I'm going to pick it up with my hand behind the ball, and I'm just going to support it, and then I'm going to pass from the outside of my body, uh, hopefully around that defensive player, uh, to my target. There are some cases where I, where I do uh, prefer a one-hand pass without having to bring that second hand to it. Um, typically, those are going to be bounce passes, and typically I really only want those on backdoor cuts. Um, you know, but as uh, my strength and conditioning class learned uh, this year, um, most things, it depends. Um, so that's not an absolute for me that it absolutely has to be a bounce pass, that it absolutely has to be a two-hand pass. Um, you know, but those are my general guidelines. Is, um, I spend more time teaching push passes than I do an actual, you know, traditional chest pass. Um, and I do encourage players who are able to, to be able to make that one-hand pass. Um, it does occasionally lead to a turnover because there's miscommunication uh, between a player, you know, the passer and the receiver. So there is that potential, um, you know, but I think there's that happens with two hand passes as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, off the dribble, um, to me, especially with the younger players, I think that's almost more important than shoot than learning to pass from a um, stationary or, you know, with a, with a ball already in your hands uh, position because... Um, just the nature of the game, so much of the game is played off the dribble um, with steals and presses and so forth um, that I think being able to pass right off the dribble becomes a very important uh, skill, whether you are dribbling and jump stop and make a quick pass or whether you're dribbling and passing without coming to a complete stop. Um, so for younger players, it's definitely uh, a harder skill to learn, um, but I think it is a skill that's that's used as much or more than, you know, a, more of a stationary pass um, that is typically practiced. Um, so once players have some strength and they have the skill to be able to dribble, then I want to add in that pass and, and work on, uh, you know, bringing the offhand to the ball, protecting the ball, and being able to make that pass right off the dribble with as little backward movement or as little wind-up as possible to try to get that quicker pass. Obviously, smaller athletes or longer distances are going to require a bigger, uh, you know, wind-up to get enough force on the ball. Um, but oftentimes that's where I want them to take one extra dribble and shorten the pass so that they can make the pass a little bit quicker. Um, but again, it depends on the situation, depends on the player. Um, but ideally, yeah, I want to push pass outside of my body, bring my weak hand or my non-dribbling hand to the ball. Um, and then there are occasions when I do want simply a, a, a one-hand pass without having to bring that weak hand to the ball. So I think it's something that uh, players should learn and practice both methods, maybe not at the same time, maybe not at all ages, um, but once they're getting proficient in passing the ball and dribbling and, and being able to make these types of decisions, uh, then certainly I think they should start to learn both types of skills.